he had three cats and I had my dogs and there was another woman so we were in a pet room. The medication went in the garbage uh, along with some of his other stuff. Uh, they just went in and swept it all into a bag and threw it in the garbage and then uh, I got Carrie up and he was trying to dig in the garbage for it. His medication was Ativan. He had nothing to eat, nothing to drink the entire time from 10 o'clock Friday morning until the ambulance took him out. They, they wouldn't come in and check on him. They wouldn't, nothing, nothing. And I hadn't planned on being there that whole time. I had planned on being there Friday, uh, Friday night, but because of the condition he was in and the way staff was just ignoring him, I couldn't leave. I had to make sure he was okay and that they were telling the truth he was going through withdrawal, but he wasn't a drinker and he definitely wasn't doing drugs because then another word came up of overdose. And you know what, my greatest fear is, had I not been there and he died, they would have covered him with a sheet, taken him out as an overdose and it would have been done with because they don't even have a proper name for him. Saturday was, okay, Saturday was when he was getting really bad. And a few times I couldn't get him up on my own. I asked staff to help me. And uh, some of them were accommodating and helped me get him up. But then later on in the afternoon, they wouldn't. He was breathing differently. He was <gasps> and And I, I, when I talked to my mom, I explained it to her like a death rattle. You know, the way his, uh, and he was, his breath was getting, uh, shorter and shorter at one time I actually thought he was dead because he wasn't breathing and then I thought maybe he had like had to have a CPAP mask or something but um, he, he was he was out of it all day and all night it, it wasn't until Sunday morning that he started talking and I couldn't get him up he wanted to go pee and I couldn't um, but Saturday he was, no, he just laid on that cot and uh... Well, because his lungs had fluid in them, I was, I, well, I assumed it was, one staff member told me it was a bad cold. One staff member told me it was alcohol withdrawal. And the other one, the supervisor, told me he was faking it. And because I'm naive, I believe everybody, but I'm a non-drinker. I would have smelt stale alcohol, and there was none on him. And, uh, you know, every time he went to the bathroom, he was naked under a sheet, so he wasn't carrying drugs around. He didn't have anywhere to put them. He didn't have anything to put them in. So, um, it, 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 yeah. And what changed on Sunday to make you or others think it was a crisis? Well, it, it, he was trying to get up to go to the bathroom, like I said, about 7 or 7.30, and he, he couldn't, and he ended up in that position across the cot. And he, I couldn't lift him, I couldn't. And he wasn't lucid. He was all over the place with saying goodbye to the cats in the morning and talking to his mom in the sky and doing all these weird things. So, um, you know, I've watched my grandfather die um, of dehydration, actually. And he knew he was going and he said goodbye to the world and he's going home tomorrow. He knew he was going to die in the morning. And then at one point he said, my heart, my heart. And you know, I don't know how many times I asked staff before and after the video. It, it, it was, he, he did not leave that room on, on Sunday. He couldn't get up off that cot. You can see in the video him trying to get himself onto the cot. He was dead weight. I couldn't lift him. I had a, a shattered wrist and I just had surgery on my left hand. So it was hard enough to lift him when he was helping me. It, it, I couldn't, I couldn't move him. And they came in and saw him laying like that and just left him there. No. 
He was out. He was foaming at the mouth. His eyes were back, and he was in that position across the the stretcher, the across the cot, the wrong way. And he wasn't moving, and he wasn't breathing when I ran out. And that's when Muhammad and and Jody Ann went in, and uh, that's why I ran out because there was no more noise. It was silent. And when I looked at him, all this foam. And uh, they said that was from now a he an overdose. What? The man hasn't moved for three days. He didn't have the energy to overdose. When he came out on the stretcher, they had to take him right past me. He had something that was like a point. It looked like a face mask of sorts that was covering something on his neck. He had... Um, IVs and, and some machine at the end. I don't know what all those things are, but um, to me it looked pretty scary. I found out today that someone took a picture of him in the ambulance. I am going to try and get that picture. Not in the ambulance, in the stretcher going through. That was in 15 or so minutes of him being gone. It was like staff had already taken, the, decided that his cats were going. So the SPCA guy came in and he went in the room and I ran in the room and I said, what are you doing? He said, we're taking the cats. And I said, you can't take the cats. You don't know if he's coming back. He, the cats are gonna be taken care of. As long as somebody's animal is, you're willing to take care of them, they can stay. And he was fine with that. He didn't wanna take them because uh, Sarah and I were gonna watch the cats and uh, he said, but I have to ask the staff. So the same supervisor that wouldn't help me, told me he was faking it, told this, the, the, the SPCA to take the cats. We could not have them. And the guy was, he could, like, we were crying. The guy understood how we felt. And when, you know, him and I were walking out of the room and when we got to a private, area like at the doorway he said he's not coming back he's not going to make it it's better we do this now so um yeah then the cats were gone staff came in that late at late that night about two in the morning um looking for his cell phone which for some reason had long been missing because they told me it had gone with his personal effects which were put in the garbage and um, why would the hospital be calling staff to come and look, get his cell phone to look for his next of kin that he, they want to contact his next of kin that's what he said and I said well I said your supervisor who helped him die or helped him on his way to death uh, said that the phone was gone with him so that was very strange but the super, they, they all didn't have a chance to know the whole story before they opened their mouth and the next shift and the next shift. And so he came in looking for the cell phone to contact next of kin. And that was it. Never heard another word. The one thing I want them to know everywhere is that staff did not call 911 and these things have to change. This is not a rare occurrence. 